Just imagine, it's 1920. The pandemic is over. People across the city are anxious to get out of the house, back to work, back to their pre-pandemic lives, and spend time with their family and friends. As spring approached, everyone throughout the city had thoughts on their mind of getting out of the house and spending time outdoors. Swope Park offered many activities, golf courses, shelter houses, a zoo, and much more for outdoor recreation, unless you were African American. African Americans could go to Swope Park, but almost all of its amenities were off limits. It was only by public proclamation for specific events that discrimination was prohibited. Protests led by prominent leaders like Dr. William Tompkins, superintendent of the Colored General Hospital, did not bring change. Discrimination at Swope Park was the reality. Interactions with Caucasian park goers made the experience extremely undesirable. For African Americans, Swope Park was not a true destination place for much needed recreation and entertainment. Spending time with family and friends was valued and there was little desire to ruin it. The Leeds community was growing. New homes are being built exclusively for colored people. According to 1920 census records, more than 300 people lived in the Leeds community, including nearly 100 children. Providing a recreational space in the community was ideal. Aspiring entrepreneurs started Liberty Amusement Association with a vision to give colored people of Kansas City and the surrounding territory a modern amusement park. 15 acres of land was purchased along Raytown Road and an investment opportunity was offered. Shares were $1 each with a promise that every dollar invested would return a profit of up to 40%. It was a win-win situation for the African American community. Liberty Park celebrated its opening day June 15, 1922. Advertisements in the Kansas City Call labeled Liberty Park as the Negro's Playground and the only place of its kind in the United States that is run for the exclusive use of Negroes. Advertised amenities at the park included a merry-go-round, Ferris wheels, concession stands, picnic grounds, and playgrounds. There was a lake that served as a swimming pool in the summer and an ice rink in the winter. There was a baseball diamond used by both young and old. And one of the most popular activities at Liberty Park was a fireworks display during the annual 4th of July celebration. Kansas City transportation services were not segregated, so a brief streetcar ride on the 31st Street line, a short walk or ride in a private taxi brought visitors to the park entrance. Street access was good, so cars brought even more visitors. The park was billed as the greatest civic improvement in the history of Kansas City. A variety of entertainment was available to park goers. Depending on the season and occasion, entertainment included boating, a figure eight speedway, radio concerts, a picnic area, fireworks displays, and sporting events broadcast through loudspeakers. The dance hall, which could accommodate 300 people, offered live performances, and featured popular groups like the orchestras led by Benny Moten and George Lee. One of the first company picnics at the park in 1922 was a group of employees from Kansas City Nut and Bolt, the company that later became Sheffield Steel. In 1923, opening day at the park was May 6. The park offered 30 attractions, including special games for kids and the finest dance floor in Kansas City. Montgomery Ward Porters was one of the many groups that enjoyed their company picnic at Liberty Park that year. Over the years, the Leeds community continued to grow. More homes were built in areas near the park and residents continued to enjoy access to recreation and entertainment free from discrimination. According to historian Dr. Gary Kremer, Liberty Park became a favorite summertime spot for gypsies who would often stay for weeks at a time. The gypsies would perform each evening for all who wanted to attend. The gypsy performances would attract large crowds with residents mostly listening from the comfort of their homes. According to former residents, there was a fear of the gypsies stealing people and turning them into slaves. In March 1929, just seven years after the opening of Liberty Park, Yvonne Starks was born. Along with her siblings, she was raised by her grandparents just a few blocks away. 
she attended the first Dunbar Elementary School and graduated from Lincoln High School in 1946. After high school, she attended Lincoln University in Jefferson City, Missouri and earned multiple degrees, including a Bachelor of Arts in Education, a Master of Arts in Sociology, and a degree in School Administration. In 1991, Lincoln University also bestowed an honorary doctorate degree in Humanities. Senator Wilson's distinguished career included being a teacher, consultant, principal, and director of elementary education in the Kansas City, Missouri School District. During her career in education, she became the first African-American president of the Missouri Association of the Elementary School Principals. Those who knew Yvonne Starks Wilson, well, were not surprised by her career choices or achievements. According to all accounts, at a very young age, she would teach school at home and in the park with family and friends that visited the neighborhood as her students. Following her career in education, Yvonne Starks Wilson continued in public service, spending time in the Missouri legislature. She served in the Missouri House of Representatives from 1999 to 2004, and as a state senator from 2005 through 2010. As a legislator, Senator Wilson served on a number of House and Senate committees that focused on children, families, housing, education, and public safety. Her public service career also included hundreds of hours of service to local, state, and national organizations that served the public good. She was committed to the betterment of her community. Yvonne Starks Wilson's lifelong commitment to her roots and the community's commitment to Liberty Park led Leeds Dunbar residents to seek an opportunity to honor her. Listen to what friends, family, and community residents have to say. My name is Kenneth Mabry. I grew up in the Leeds Dunbar community. Uh, my family were all Randolphs as I was raised by my aunt and uncle. Uh, my familiarity with Liberty Park grew up as only one of two areas in which we could gather for recreational activities. The ball diamond there happened to host or be the location for a lot of baseball games as I was growing up. So it served as a form of entertainment. At that time, the park was surrounded on the Oakley side and the 35th Street side by woods. And foul balls would often wind up in those woods. We would go, as children, we would go fetch those balls for the adult baseball players. But the it also provided an area of recreation and playground for us in the woods because the trees were old and vines grew on those trees and we were able to swing on those vines and imitate Tarzan as we saw him uh, in the in the movies. Uh, during the winter months, as it is cold now, uh, the park had hills in which we could slide down. And as when I got older and married and had children, we owned a house on Oakley where I would take my kids with their sleds to slide down the hills in Liberty Park, which had been cleared of the wooded area. So it made it uh, a convenient and good sliding area for, the, for my children to also play. I remember the park during the great floods that we had. I had purchased a property on 35th Street Terrace that the backyard was uh, adjacent to the park. And when it would flood, the water would flood the basement of that house. Uh, my neighbor's properties, it flooded the entire houses because the water was so deep. The Cleaver, Cleaver plan ended all of that. So, 
one more thing as as I was growing up we uh, some of my contemporaries uh, played uh, practice their baseball games in the park and as youngsters we often had football games that we played there in Liberty Park so the park has uh, great memories for me uh, and not only as a child playing there but as a parent who had children that played there. Okay this is Al Brooks and I'm a uh, former resident of the Leeds Dunbar area, that's out in uh, the eastern part of Kansas City, eastern part in terms of the where the Veterans Hospital is. Grew up out there with uh, um, all black community and uh, my homegirl Yvonne Wilson, Yvonne Starks Wilson, I had a park named after her uh, last year and she passed away uh, shortly thereafter. Uh, it was Liberty Park. And I can recall there was also a tavern called Liberty Tavern right up the street. My dad used to frequent that quite a bit. And uh, I used to go there also and have my uh, big bottle of uh, knee-high strawberry soda pop. But uh, in the flood of 1951, that whole area was underwater. And in fact, the park was almost, uh, it was d deeper than, than a lake. I guess it was probably 25 or 30 feet deep because the water came from the Little Blue River all the way up to the brim of the of the park. And eventually it, it settled and that the city it was sort of a, a forgotten land out there. Leeds Dunbar area it was kind of, kind of like forgotten land. And then uh, when I became a member of the city council back in uh, uh, 1999, uh, the uh, Although that was not my district, I was elected from the 6th district, which is South Kansas City. Of course, Leeds was, was, was always home for memories and the kind of uh, feelings of, of, uh, of family and neighbors and uh, the art school, Dunbar Elementary School, just over the hill there where all of us went. And then I uh, had to go either to the R.T. Coles Vocational or Lincoln High School with only two black high schools at the time. And so then when I became a member of the council, the uh, third district, that's in the third city district, council district, but I took an interest in there and so we got lights and then before we got lights I had the park department who uh, was most gracious to end up um, um, using mosquitoes uh, uh, repellent out there so they could have uh, um, picnics and then after that the lights. And then when the name came up of naming it uh, after uh, my good friend and my homegirl, Yvonne Starks Wilson, they had some hearings with the park department. And of course, it was from Liberty Park to Yvonne uh, Wilson uh, Park there now. And, and I'm hopeful that, and I know also since then, the, the community has taken advantage of that. And we've had a number of activities there. And it is a gathering place uh, for the residents of the Leeds Dunbar area, as well as uh, all over the city. Because the Leeds Dunbar area is not Today, what it was when, when uh, and, and I should say, Senator Wilson also, she was also in the state the House of Representatives, then Senator when she retired. And um, it, it, it's, uh, it, it's not what it was when we grew up out there. There was not a vacant lots and houses with dilapidated and torn down and become a, a dumping ground for people who, illegal dumping. And, uh, but the park has stayed uh, beautiful. And I'm hopeful that the, as new housing comes around and all that happens in the area, that we will have more uh, uh, beautification around the park and around the area. Greg Colasse. And um, just wanted to share my experience with uh, the Von Stark Wilson Park and what it means to me. And um, I guess just my experiences growing up here in the Leeds Dunbar area, uh, lifelong resident and uh, was born and raised uh, here on the east side in Leeds. And um, the, the, the park was very instrumental uh, in my development growing up. Um, used to go down there as a kid, play ball in the park, uh, sandlot baseball or softball or what have you, um, just running around and playing and, you know, just doing all kind of kid stuff uh, during the winter times. I like now actually sledding 
<clears throat> back in the day we used to uh <laughs> we didn't have a sled so we used to use trash bags or cardboard boxes you know uh sliding down the big the big hill uh down there and uh just remember the good times uh doing doing that but uh the park uh was a very instrumental uh in helping helping with the development and as i with my development and as i got older um playing ball and finally being able to get on the court and play with some of the uh some of the older fellas uh big doc uh Quand, uh brian donahue uh even my older brothers uh you know when they would pick me to run run game with them um you know that that, that definitely felt good and felt like i had arrived of course um Interestingly enough, uh, Mrs. Yvonne Stark Wilson was actually a classmate uh, of my mother. And so um, she and my mom were, were pretty fond of one another uh, from what I hear. And uh, that, that was really, really, really good to be involved in that. Um, I know that there was a town hall meeting some years ago. Oh, this was maybe, I don't know, maybe about... 10 years or so, uh, if memory serves me correctly, at least 10 years ago. And uh, they were having a town hall meeting there at the uh, Robert Mohart Multipurpose Center. And uh, they were talking, I think, about uh, some of the parks and the status of some of the parks on the east side and well, within the city uh, as a whole. And I remember that I got up for, for comment and uh, addressed the panel. And one of the panelists was uh, Mr. Ron Finley. And uh, I had mentioned that at that particular time, I had heard that uh, the park was called Liberty Park then, that Liberty Park was uh, on the decommission list. And uh, I raised the question as to why it was on the decommission list, because that was, you know, one of one of our uh, staples here in the uh, Dunbar community of the Dunbar area. And um, uh, I think he just took it on as a, as a personal challenge. And, uh, some of the other members didn't even have an answer to that question, uh, and for me, it was it was definitely something that was near and dear, uh, growing up and you know uh, using it and being part of the neighborhood here. Uh, I felt that we at least deserved to have have the park um, recommissioned and uh, utilized so that we could actually go down there and um, you know just just have fun like we we had always had. Uh, I remember. Uh, growing up as well, you know, we would have some of the Leeds reunions, uh, just different family members who had lived out here periodically uh, would come back and we'd have a good time, you know, play music and barbecue and fry fish and just all those different type things, throw a frisbee, throw a football, basketball, baseball, whatever. And it was just a good communal event to be a part of and to just sit and listen to some of the stories and uh, some of the things that... Uh, that the elders used to do uh, when they lived out out in the uh, Lee's Dunbar area, um, you know, uh, yesteryear. So um, it was uh, a very good project um, to see come along and in, in, in working with the Heart of the City uh, Neighborhood Association now um, to be able to be part of that, to help bring that along. Um, Kathy Persley has worked tirelessly um, Kimberly Randolph, as well as Janice Vertrus as well. Um, just just a lot a lot of input from a lot of people. Um, and, you know, I won't get into naming a lot of names, but uh, there are a lot of people that help support the renaming of the park to Yvonne Stark Wilson Park. And uh, it was just really a crowning achievement once she was able to come out and actually partake in the naming ceremony. That was a very, very special moment, and uh, I was just glad to be a part of it and glad that I could help um, transition it and uh, uh, bring it into fruition. So um, that's my experience, and hey, I'm just glad to be here and glad, glad to I'm celebrate. I'm Dean Smith, and um, my maiden name is Starks. However, my grandmother and grandfather reared four of us back, sent all four of us to college after my mother, she had to take us in because my mother died when uh, I was two. And, uh, but she reared us out in Leeds and Liberty Park was there. And when we were small, we'd go down to the park. But at certain part times of the year, grandma wouldn't let us go down there because the gypsies would come and park out. 
And everybody, we never locked any doors out there in Leeds, but when we knew that the gypsies was in town and camped out down there in the park, we all had to lock our doors because they would even come up to Maple's grocery store <laughs> and steal. Well, when we were small, it was a stream of lake that went through there, the water. And in fact, Mr. Gray uh, had a wreck on uh, the uh, little bridge that they had down there and passed uh, right there at the park, where the park is now. So water always settled down in there. So I don't know uh, how it's doing now. Uh, I don't know if the Corps of Engineers did anything with the Blue River that helps it not be uh, flooded much now. I'm really not aware of it. But we could go down there, we play baseball. And uh, when I was a teenager, um, it used to be they had just tore it down. Used to be a swimming pool down there. And uh, sure enough, there is a picture of uh, Mr. and Mrs. George Gates out there in Leeds in the swimming pool at the park. There's a picture that uh, we do have. And speaking of pictures, when my father passed in 85, I went through some of his things and I did acquire a picture of really uh, 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 Gates and Sons. Uh, the first Gates and Sons, which uh, my dad painted the menu on the, on the, uh, on the uh, window. And Sonny Gibson has done a replica of that down at the uh, uh, Gates Barbecue on uh, 47th Street. But getting back to uh, Liberty Park, uh, we would go down there and play baseball, and I was really a tomboy. And um, uh, uh, Gino Ray and uh, Alan Books would, would come down on uh, White and play on the weekend. Uh, oh, in the 40s, all in the 40s. Uh, when I first found out that they were going to name Liberty Park after my sister, Senator Yvonne Starks Wilson, I was really, really elated. And uh, the ceremony that they had was just wonderful. The, uh, 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 the association out there at Dunbar did such a beautiful job, and the attendance was just great. Uh, since then, and since uh, Yvonne's passing, the family has gone out and put balloons up on the date of her death, which was October the 14th, uh, 2019. And uh, I drive out there quite often and just sit and just remember and reminisce. Uh, since I am the only one left in the family at this age, uh, the kids call me the uh, matriarch. Uh, because all of my siblings and uh, above are uh, deceased. But I do go out there and have really beautiful memories of the park and of my family. Liberty Park remained privately owned until 1967, when it became part of the KC Park system. In September 2018, with the support of Senator Wilson's friends, former colleagues, and neighborhood residents, a resolution renaming Liberty Park was adopted by the Board of Park Commissioners and the park officially became known as Yvonne Starks Wilson Park. Resolution number 31108 reads in part as follows. Whereas the Board of Parks and Recreation Commissioners is proud to recognize and honor individuals who have a vision and are dedicated to serving Kansas City with distinction and whereas the board retains the right to name parks, boulevards, parkways, greenways, and recreational facilities in honor of individuals, living or deceased, who have made significant and outstanding contributions to the city and parks 
and recreation in particular, and whereas Yvonne Starks Wilson, a child of Leeds neighborhood, spent many happy hours relaxing and playing in Liberty Park, and whereas Yvonne Wilson provided stability, passion, and guidance for students and teachers over 35 years, serving as principal of three elementary schools at one time, and also served as the director of elementary education. And whereas Yvonne Starks Wilson spent her entire life working to enhance the lives of people in Kansas City and the state of Missouri. And whereas former Senator Wilson represented the citizens of Kansas City while in the Missouri House of Representatives and the Missouri Senate for 11 years, focusing on issues of education, children and families, housing and public safety, service to her community, city and state remain a constant in her life. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Parks and Recreation Commissioners agrees to recognize former Senator Yvonne Starks Wilson for her leadership and distinguished service to the citizens of Kansas City and preservation of the history of African Americans in Kansas City by naming Liberty Park located at 34th Terrace and Stadium Drive a 17.7 acre park, the Yvonne Starks Wilson Park, part of the City Neighborhood Association in partnership with KC Parks and UMKC Center for Neighborhoods, hosted the park dedication ceremony on June 22, 2019. The event was attended by current and former residents, public officials, and Senator Wilson's family and friends. Streets surrounding the park were lined with cars, Families took turns snapping photos, including the Yvonne Starks Wilson monument sign. There was live music, a horse show, and plenty of food. There was lots of reminiscing and laughter, a celebration of a life well lived, a place well loved, and an honor much deserved. The dedication ceremony was one of Senator Wilson's last public appearances. Over the years, the park landscape has changed. There are no more Ferris wheels, no swimming pool, no baseball diamond, no dance hall. The street name has changed, yet the park has continued to be a recreation destination and an important part of Kansas City and neighborhood history. It is the only park in the KC Park System named in honor of an African-American woman. The community spirit that existed in the early years continues. The park has remained a space for adults to gather, laugh, and reminisce. It is still a place where children can run and play a place for adults and children alike to spend time with family and friends, a place for picnics, amateur sports shows, and snow play days. Annual neighborhood reunions are anxiously anticipated and attract former and current residents and their friends. On any given day, you may find a resident at the park remembering how they treasure what the park means to them. KC Parks staff, resident and community volunteers work together to assure the park remains an inviting destination. Those who knew the park love the park. Current and former residents joyfully share stories about time spent there. Each one of the previous storytellers has a glimmer in their eye as fond memories of family, friends, and good times are told. Their stories demonstrate how the space has shaped their lives and remains a destination place. The stories tell how each generation adds to family traditions and creates new memories. Members of Senator Wilson's family are part of this group and visit the park often. Family members are involved with neighborhood association activities and are committed to the legacy. Neighborhood leaders are committed to all efforts to improve Wilson Park. Leaders meet with city staff and engage strategic partners to address water management, lighting, safety, transportation and access, environmental protection and recreational possibilities. The master plan for improvement is evolving. Resident engagement is encouraged and discussions about improvements and activities related to the park are shared during monthly neighborhood meetings. On June 15, 2022, Yvonne Starks Wilson Park will celebrate 100 years of being a recreational destination, a place for families, a place for friends, a place for having fun. The celebration will lay the groundwork for the next 100 years of outdoor enjoyment and pursuit of good health. The best is yet to come.
This historical moment was brought to you by Heart of the City Neighborhood Association Incorporated, located in Kansas City, Missouri, and in association with Cascade Media Group.